Welcome to our lecture online. So what we're going to do in this video is compare how we determine whether or not we should reject a null hypothesis or accept a null hypothesis based upon looking at the mean of the sample and the test statistic. We're going to compare those two things to see what the significance is of one versus the other. Remember that the whole idea was that if for some reason the test statistic ends up in the critical region, well, then we're going to reject null hypotheses. So the example we're going to use here is the size of water polo players. Let's say that we claim that the average size is 100 kilograms. So of all the water polo players around the world, if we take the complete population and we find the mean of that population, we claim it's 100 kilograms with a standard deviation of 5 kilograms. So our null hypothesis is that the average size of the players is equal to 100 kilograms, implying at 100 or less than 100 kilograms. Or the alternate hypothesis is that the average size of players is greater than 100 kilograms because there's a suspicion that it might be bigger. That's why we use the one tail test. We're going to see if by taking some random samples, we're going to find that the average size of water polo players is greater than what we thought it was, greater than the uh, 100 kilograms. So we're going to take a look at the different sample sizes. We're going to start with a sample size of one, sample size of two, and then we're going to show you some more videos where the sample size continues to grow to see what would happen. In each case, we're going to assume that the sample size mean is going to be, or the sample mean is going to be 105. So what if we take one player at random and we measure the size of that player, that player is 105 kilograms, what do we conclude from that? Now notice that the mean is going to be 105 kilograms. The mean is not inside the critical region, but again, that's not what we're going to check. We're going to check to see if the test statistic is in the critical region or not. So we're going to calculate the test statistic. So we take the difference between the sample mean and the population mean, divided by the standard deviation, and multiply it times the square root of n. So we show how that equation is developed there. And that ends up being equal to 1. And since 1 is less than the z-score, 1.65, well, we're going to, therefore, fail to reject the null hypothesis. So with one sample, even though the mean of the sample is 105, that was for the one sample, and the mean of the population is 100, that's a significant difference. But since we only picked one, we don't have enough confidence that we should be able to reject the null hypothesis. So that means we're still going to say the average size of water polo players is 100 kilograms. Now what happens when we change the size of the sample? We now call it 2. Sample size of 2. Still, the mean of the sample is 105, so that didn't change, but we now have two players picked at random instead of just one. Notice that the sample mean is still at 105, still the same difference from the mean of the population to the mean of the sample. But now when we calculate the test statistic, notice we take the difference between the mean of the sample the mean and the mean of the population, divided by the standard deviation, which is still equal to 1, but now we multiply it times the square root of the sample size, which is 2. And the sample size, the square root of 2, is 1.414. So now, notice by doubling the size of the sample, we've changed the value of the t statistic, the test statistic, from 1 to 1.414. It's moved the t out to the right, closer to the critical region, but not enough to push it into the critical region. So even by picking two players and having the average being 105 out of two players, it's not enough players to be confident enough that we should reject the null hypothesis, so we end up not rejecting null hypothesis. But you can see by making the sample size bigger, it gives you more weight that the average that you end up with is maybe significantly different from the average of the population, enough so you can reject the null hypothesis. But we weren't quite there yet. In both cases, the t, the test statistic, is smaller than the z-score. So in either case, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we still assume that our initial premise that the average size of water polo players equals 100 kilograms is still correct. We don't have enough confidence with a sample size of 1 or a sample size of 2 
to reject that null hypothesis. And that's the significance between the difference between the sample size, oh, I mean the sample mean and the test statistic by the size of the sample. And that is how we know how to look at these numbers and how to interpret them. Okay. We did it correctly this time. Congratulations. <laughs>